Yeah, here it is. I got it. Oh, really? Ah, History of India by Bajan Smith. Look. <coughs> here, I don't understand one thing. Why our teacher selected us three books for one topic? Gandhi's role in national movement. Yes. I don't understand either. Three books for one topic. Well, I think, why don't we pick up just one book each and complete the assignment and be done with it? That's why, and that's a good idea. Fantastic. Let's do one thing. Mm. You take R.P. Dutt's India today, mm. you take Tara Chand, and I take this. Let's do with it. Okay? Okay. That's great. That's fine. Now I'll go shopping. Very fine. Are you see somebody else? Something special? <laughs> Nothing, bye. Okay, bye. I'll see bye. you. I'll see you. Yeah, Ramesh. Yes? This history is really boring subject. Yes, Samir. Very true. You just cram the facts and that's it. Okay, come on, let's go. What's your plan? Well, I'll go to canteen. Uh -huh. Ajay. Hi. Mm. Hi, Ajay. Hi. How are you? Fine. That's great. <coughs> well, I see you have not uh, completed your assignment yet. Come on, tell me something special. No, it's over now. Samir, uh, what have you done? See, I've gone through the whole book. But tell us, what have you written? See, what I've written is, Gandhi was carrying the British idea of liberty and freedom to the Indian people. Right. But not the British idea. Yes, the British idea. Listen, it was the British who had introduced this idea in India. Besides, they helped to develop this idea by giving constitutional concessions for our self-government. You can look at the Acts 1919 and 1935. But how do you say that, Samir? Look, if only the colonial administrators had kept this idea in their mind and worked properly, riots and demonstrations would have been unnecessary. How can it be? Spear has made it clear in his book. Hmm, interesting. No, Gandhiji was taking the idea of freedom to the people of India. And all these ideas came from our great past. Don't you know how Porus defended India against Alexander? And how bravely Samud Gupta fought just to unite India? And all these facts have been given and proven by Tarachan. Man, that's ancient India. In modern sense, India was united only under British rule. Look, man, don't you know that the British were only evil conquerors? And one must fight conquerors if one has to be free and united. And that is why Gandhiji called the people of India to just throw all these British people out. And it was only his idea of uh, Desh Bhakti and freedom which helped India to be free and united. Man, according to R.P. Dutt, Gandhi was really of no help to the nation movement. Did he ever care that the struggle of working class can really liberate India? No. As soon as the working class in Chauri Chaura came on struggle, he withdrew the struggle. The moment the people came on steed in Sholapur, he announced Salt Satyagra. To sum up, he was not really interested in real freedom of India. What? You are saying Gandhiji was not really interested in the real freedom of India? Yeah. Are you gone mad or what? First you get all your facts wrong. And now you are discussing and arguing unnecessarily. Both of you have got your facts wrong. Only my facts are right. No, my facts are right. No, my facts are right. Both of you are wrong. I am saying my facts are right and your facts are wrong. Both of you are wrong and I am right. My facts are right. My no. facts are right. Mine. 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 What happened? A subject which appeared to be so simple has suddenly become controversial. Were the facts so wrong? From what you saw, doesn't it appear that facts seem to be linked to interpretations, one of Spear, one of Tarachand, and one of R.P. Dutt? How would you write your assignment if you are one of the boys? Let us start with this problem, how to write the assignment. The starting point could be to have an understanding of the technique used by these boys, and later on, we can examine what the writers of these books did. The approach adopted by these students was a shortcut through 19th century scientific history to that of a lazy man's approach to history. The 19th century scientific history derived its method from the idea that the philosophy of history was in the service of natural science. Inspired by this spirit, the historian collected all kinds of facts and patched them up to write history. 
Later on, this came to be known as Caesar and Paste history. In this method, there was no recognized scheme for either selecting facts or putting them together. The historian was merely a narrator and collector of facts. Though your lazy man approach is conditioned by 19th century scientific history, but you have reduced your facts to just one book. By doing so, you are not even following the 19th century scientific history in its full rigor. You have adopted a shortcut and this has landed you into problems. But at the same time, you are right in thinking that there can be different viewpoints or interpretations in history. Each of the books discussed have their own viewpoints from which they see Gandhi. Spears' viewpoint comes in the tradition of imperialist history. In this viewpoint, the key argument is to justify colonial dominance. It highlights the benevolence of colonial rule and ignores its exploitative character. For it, colonialism led to modernization and hence even the idea of freedom was a gift of colonial rule to Gandhi. In conflict to Spears' point of view, that is the imperialist point of view, is the nationalist point of view as that of Tarachand. He also follows the 19th century scientific technique to write history. He collects facts and patches them up to write about the march of idea of nationalism in India through Gandhi. He is critical of the British. The sources of inspiration, according to him, lay in India's glorious ancient past and not in colonial benevolence. R. P. Dutt strongly contests the claims of both imperialists and nationalists. His approach is based on a materialistic understanding of history governed by Marxist theory. Instead of purely idea-based approach, his concern is with the role of socio-economic forces that shaped Indian history. In this, he stresses upon the central role of working class. That is why he is critical of Gandhi for not giving the working people's struggle a central role in the national strategy. He has a more advanced technique. No longer are facts just gathered to write history. In his method, the historian enters into a dialogue with his facts. And he has also to clarify his own viewpoint in this process. Thus, not only the facts, but the historian also becomes crucial. It is precisely because of these varying viewpoints that you have to read more than one book. This helps you in charting out the already available material on your topic. Let us have a brief look at a chart which gives you in brief what has just been said about Gandhi. Schools of history, their approach and technique. Lazy man. His approach comes from whatever is read. No conscious thinking about it. His technique is a shortcut through any method or approach. Overall idea is to gather facts. Imperialist, justification of British rule, technique, patchwork, gather facts, right. No role for historian. Nationalist, outright rejection of British rule, technique, patchwork, gather facts, right. No role for historian. Marxist, anti-imperialist, central role for working class, technique, dialogue between historian and facts, historian is a crucial figure. In this chart, an attempt has been made to map out certain trends and techniques of history writing on your theme. That is, you have graphed out the history of writings on your theme. Historio Graphy, that is, historiography is precisely this exercise. But then, what do you do now? The problem of writing the assignment still remains. Here, you can do two main things. Firstly, look at the arguments in each book on Gandhi internally. 
that is see whether there is consistency in what is being said if so say so in your writer if not explain why secondly examine the argument externally that is set the various writings against each other for example ask why gandhi is a great man to one and not to the other have some important concerns been missed out by one writer or the other it is by asking these critical questions that you enter into a dialogue with your facts in your case the books you have read the step to critical questions is the step to clarify your own subjective notions for example you might have criticized gandhi or praised him but in the light of this exercise can you say so in black and white no it is by raising these questions that not only on your theme of gandhi but in general new approaches have developed on modern indian history for example intellectual history emerged by asking questions on idea of nationalism let us see what professor k n panikkar has to say on that broadly speaking there are uh, two ways of approaching intellectual history one is what generally known as an idealist approach an internal view of history in which the ideas are examined in isolation ideas are examined as a part of the system of ideas only logically constructed as a sequence of development in society this to a large extent avoids an examination of the connection of these ideas with major societal processes as a part of the idealist view there is another dimension and that is a dimension which historians generally call as an external view the external view is one which tries to relate ideas with deeds that is to say ideas are examined as a response to the various events or various deeds in society it is some sort of a functional view of ideas uh, from these two general aspects of or general approaches of historiography in which different disciplines enter that is intellectual history is one in which you have philosophers political scientists historians join together and their ideas or their interests convert to that extent the intellectual history is some sort of an interdisciplinary effort another trend for example is the writing of regional history which asks questions on broader statement of indian nationalism at a regional level and here we have professor ravindra kumar uh, we have recently as i suggested uh, a new focus uh, in history which is also reflected in historical writing on maharashtra though as far as the maharashtrian scene is concerned uh, this interest was first uh, expressed by an american scholar gail omvet who wrote on an extremely important figure in the life of the poor and ordinary people of maharashtra namely mahatma jyotiba phule who addressed himself uh, to the non brahman to the poorer sections of rural society in maharashtra and uh, gail omvet and a few other scholars have examined the ideology of this particular sector of maharashtrian society which was not necessarily drawn into the Uh, mainstream nationalist activity in the 20th century which convulsed and transformed our country and led to uh, independence in 1947 but which after 1947 has surfaced once again in the new voices we hear all over the country just as we hear them in maharashtra also uh, seeking to ensure a more just social order in our country seeking to ensure that the 
cake of production is distributed with a greater measure of equity and fairness uh, across uh, different classes and different communities in our society. And this literature, I think, was a very useful corrective uh, to the mainstream historical writing, to which I think I also uh, contributed, which focused on the urban elites, which focused on the more affluent sections of the rural peasantry, and which related their economic life, their aspirations, and their ideology uh, to the Congress-led uh, nationalist movement in the 20th century. Similarly, great stress is being laid on economic history. And in the words of Professor Sabesachi Bhattacharya, the <coughs> nationalist historians pointed to certain basic features of India's uh, economic development since the end of the 18th century. First, they pointed to the process of deindustrialization or the destruction of native handicraft industries. Second, they emphasized that drain of wealth, the unilateral transfer of resources from the colonial country to the imperial country, England. Third, uh, they also emphasized the uh, role of the government in promoting the destruction of industries and the non-development of Indian industries through the tariff policy. And finally, uh, they also underlined the lack of developmental expenditure, the lack of investments in certain crucial areas that could have contributed to the growth of the Indian economy. Uh, but <coughs> although the nationalist economists, through their criticism, uh, developed a very powerful critique of imperialism, they did not necessarily connect this critique with a broader understanding of the capitalist system of which imperialism may be considered to be a part. These were the concerns arrived at by these historians after rigorous research and questioning. However, as a student, you have to ask your questions at the level of your assignment. Maybe in this process, you stumble upon the questions raised by them or you come across fresh questions. And in this way, the process of historiography and history writing continues.